that was um, Mozart. Um, welcome once again to um, Cartland's Kitchen. Well, the first in the new series of Cartland's Kitchen because we were San Remo sources before. And today we're going to be looking at the slow cooker. So come on and join me in the kitchen after a brief interlude in the garden. Well, here we are in the kitchen. Um, you may be wondering why I'm holding a tennis racket. Well, that's because um, yesterday I had quite a long match down at the Target Tennis Center and I developed tennis elbow. And tennis elbow is renowned, of course, for being uh, the cook's worst nightmare. So before we do anything else today, we're going to go out into the garden and I'm going to show you how I'm going to treat um, my tennis elbow using just uh, natural rainfall from our lovely sky. Well, as you know, here at Cartlands, we have um, 12 water butts. That's as many as I've found so far. This is my main one, which is fed from the uh, quite a long piece of guttering. So it fills up quite regularly, which is great. And it's lovely and full today because we've had some lovely typical bank holiday rain. And this is perfect um, because it's a good temperature, quite a chilly temperature for treating your tennis elbow. So I'm just going to show you what I'm going to do. All it involves, of course, is um, dipping the tennis elbow and holding it in this barrel. Uh, I think the water must be about 10 degrees or 12 degrees. Putting it in the barrel for um, up to 20 minutes, um, by which time your arms should be falling off. Um, and that's the treatment. Simple, free, just using natural resources. And then we can get back in to continue in the Cartland's kitchen. See you soon. Well, as you know, we're a very traditional um, kitchen uh, here at Cartland's. And today we're going to be talking uh, about the slow cooker, which is a very kind of traditional means of, of cooking. And I think much better than an air fryer and all these newfangled inventions that everyone seems to be getting these days. Um, before we talk about the slow cooker, a quick word from our sponsor, Scott's Porridge Oats. Oats. Right, um, so we're going to swing the camera around and I'm going to introduce you to my slow cooker, which is an old towel model. I think this is about 40 years old plus. Had it, remember having it back in probably Martin Close days in, uh, in Surrey. It's a wonderful thing. I've even got a backup of one of these, slightly similar, mo um, different model in my store. And it has an auto function, which is handy. It starts on high and then goes on to low. Um, it's got a lovely big china bowl. Um, anyway, uh, the beauty of slow cooking is, as you may know, you can just put everything in and leave it. And that's what we're going to do today. Um, and we we have uh, acquired this um, successful book um, by Nathan Anthony, Board for Lunch, and we're going to cook his classic chicken curry, um, but without the peas today, because I don't really think peas should be in curry. So let's crack on. A little tip here when using your slow cooker, um, preheat it before you start preparing your ingredients because it is very slow to warm up and um, preheat it with the lid on and that gives you a bit of a head start in your cooking process. Um, one other thing I think we ought to um, address is the concern people have over leaving the slow cooker on when they're out at work or getting the shopping or taking their children to school, whatever. <clears throat> and a lot of people ask me, is my house likely to burn down? Well, uh, that is a possibility. Um, some people, um, their houses have burned down, but that's normally due to some sort of um, wiring fault um, and very, very unlikely to be caused by the slow cooker. Um, but if you are concerned, you can keep the slow cooker in an outbuilding like a garage or an outhouse so um, if there is an electrical fault you only lose that particular building 
uh, but generally speaking you're fine and even if you were delayed um, on your way uh, home or you know you had to go to hospital to A&E or something for a few hours or even a couple of days you're probably fine because the slow cooker is so slow and uses so little electricity when you come back your house will still be there and everything will be fine you may be a little bit overcooked your dish but don't worry please don't worry don't have nightmares another little tip um, because we're going to be using uh, coconut milk today um, you may you may already know but the the sediment of coconut milk always goes to the bottom so give it a shake first and uh, before you open it and then it's uh, not going to be a problem you haven't got to scrape the co coconut out from the bottom of the tin so yet another handy hint courtesy of Cartland's Kitchen sponsored by Scott's porridge oats very nice they are too Oh hello, I'm just going to take you through the uh, ingredients now. Um, these won't, this, I'm just going to give you a rough idea of the ingredients because it's not essential that you get everything down to the exact gram. You know, this isn't baking and you can get the, uh, uh, the measures in the book anyway, which is well worth uh, buying. I'm not on commission by the way. <laughs> so I'm just going to turn the camera around and we're going to show so we have of course some uh, diced chicken breast about three or four breasts um, and then we have um, a tin of coconut milk reduced fat some tomato puree some ginger and garlic i tend to put quite a lot in because i like the flavors obviously stronger flavors you can use ground and garlic if you need to that's fresh there and uh, an onion roughly chopped some uh, turmeric chili powder uh, some pepper you can put salt in but i'm reducing the salt at the moment um, some curry powder chinese five spice and um, instead of peas i'm putting lentils in which i much prefer and i think lentils go so well with curry you don't even have to make a separate dal then uh, just to let you know, uh, this isn't an ingredient, so don't put Brazil nuts in. And then as an accompaniment, um, I've got some Cheats whole grain rice. Um, I think that's probably brown rice, I hope it is. I love brown rice. And um, some naan breads, absolutely essential. And of course, the, ooh, if we can find it, the most important thing of all, the mango chutney. Just a quick look at the garden. It's uh, The sun is beginning to poke through at times. It's a bit of a wet morning. Uh, the sparrows have been wonderful this year and they're, um, I've just refreshed their seeds. They feed on the uh, feeder and the suet balls there and then uh, they go onto the ground to eat up what's spilt. Don't need to cut the grass today. Bit of a quiet day, but um, good to uh, just for odd jobs and of course, cooking at the Cartner's Kitchen. Oh, sorry, just forgot to mention also some ground cumin and some ground coriander and that completes the ingredients list. Uh, well, all the ingredients are in the slow cooker now and um, just a quick word, um, this is obviously an old fashioned slow cooker with a china bowl. And it, I think it's got a lower he heating pace, which I think is really good. So the modern ones with the metal bowls, they tend to be faster. Sometimes they cook too fast for me. Anyway, you can put the, once it's all mixed in, I would say cook this, um, according to the book anyway, on high for four hours. Um, I'm cooking it on low today, so I'd probably do it for about six to eight hours. Um, well, they can change that, obviously, and I've got the auto function on at the moment, so it's starting off high. So if I have to go out, um, I can just um, I can adjust it and um, make it uh, quicker to cook. <clears throat> but generally, I like slow, slow cooking. I think it's uh, better for the flavours and the meat and everything. 
Anyway, so we're going to leave that and we'll show you the results uh, at the end. Thank you for watching so far. Oh, one additional thing to say, um, you can still find these uh, on the second-hand market. Um, if you look on Gumtree, you'll normally find one somewhere well worth buying before these disappear for good. Tower slow cookers. Hello, that was um, Schumann, and um, I'm going to return now to see how things are doing with our curry. Thanks for joining us again. Well, the curry itself smells absolutely delicious and um, looks kind of rich and vibrant. So it's just a question really now of plating it up and um, enjoying it with some rice, naan bread and mango chutney. Well, Tesco in Barnstable sell two types of naan bread, basically. We have the plain naan bread Tesco version, which is fine, as long as you um, heat it up properly. And then we have this um, clay oven version, which is about twice the price, but is huge and absolutely delicious. So I think this evening we may go with the flame baked one.